um, on the mat. If you're able to take a cross-legged pose, then that's great. If you need to let the legs come out in front of you, that's fine as well. We are going to be sat down for a little while. So one thing that you might want to do is grab a cushion and just stick that under your bum to just raise the hips ever so slightly. It will just make it a little bit more comfortable. We're not very used to sitting cross-legged. So raising the hips just gives you a little bit of um, yeah, that lift and it'll take the pressure off the knees as well. If you want to find that seated position, we're just going to start sat. We're just going to focus on lifting the chest up, bringing the head back into a neutral position and then relaxing the shoulders down. So my shoulders are going to sit nice and low, chin up nice and proud, chest up as well. I'm going to relax the hands down to the side, just fingertips on the floor. I'm just going to inhale to raise the right shoulder up towards my right ear and extend the left shoulder down. So I'm stretching through my left trapezius here. And you should feel that stretch straight away into the left hand side of the neck. Raising up on the right hand side, pushing down onto the left. Raising one more up on the right, shrugging down on the left. And then just bring the shoulders back to the middle. And on your next inhale, lift the left shoulder and extend the right shoulder down. So I'm being really active in that right shoulder, taking it away from the right ear, extending down towards the ground, inhaling to lift the shoulder a little bit higher, exhaling to lower the right hand shoulder a little bit lower. And then just bring the shoulders back to center, give them a little bit of a roll forward, releasing off through the neck, and start rolling them back as well. So from here, we're just going to inhale, hands up, above our head, nice controlled movement, and just exhale, take the right hand down onto the left knee, and just place the left hand behind the back. Inhale to lift the chest and start to take the gaze over the right shoulder. So we're stretching into the lower back here. The more you turn the head round, the more intense the stretch is going to be. We're just starting off fast, so we don't need to be uh, going too hard at the moment. We're just feeling that stretch all the way through the back. Inhaling to lift the chest up a little bit. Exhaling to actually push through that knee, twisting slightly more. One more deep inhale. And exhale to release the hands back, come back into centre. Inhale, hands once again up above the head. Exhale, release down onto the left hand side, left hand onto the right knee, right hand onto the mat behind me. Inhale to lift the chest. Exhale to take the gaze over the left shoulder this time. It's just working exactly the same way onto the opposite side. Inhaling to lift the chest. Exhale, get a little bit more of a rotation. Inhaling again. And exhale to release there. Okay, release the hands back round to come back into that central position. And inhale the hands up above the head as we just exhale the hands down in front of us and just start to walk the fingertips out. So we're not going to go too far here, but we're just going to tuck the chin down onto the chest, allow our gaze to come down onto the mat and just start walking the fingertips ever so slowly, a little bit further away from us. And then when we're as far out as we need to be, we're just going to relax the head down, take that gaze towards the mat, and just let the weight of the head start to pull through the lower back, but also just keeping those fingertips stretching away from us, working into the lats, stretching out the shoulders a little bit as well. And just holding here for a few deep breaths, just enjoying that release. And then inhale yourself all the way back up to seated. So from here, we're just going to turn onto our knees, coming into our tabletop position. So in our tabletop pose, you want hands directly underneath the shoulders, elbows are locked out, arms are straight, and the knees are just uh, bent at 90 degrees into a comfortable position. So we're going to work through a series of bird dogs, just getting a little bit of kind of core activation. So we're going to start by just taking the right hand out in front of us, and doing a thumbs up sign. So we're rotating the hand so my thumb is pointing up towards the ceiling. And then when I'm happy with that and I've got my arm fully extended, I'm just going to send the left leg back out. So I've got right arm forward, left leg sending back. Just pause here for a second and then release the hand and the knee back down onto the mat. Inhale to raise the left hand and extend the right leg. Try and stretch through the body. So I'm taking that hand away from me, taking the foot away as well and exhale to release back down onto the mat. Right hand comes up, left foot goes back, full extension, and exhale to release back down. Inhale, left hand, right foot, fully stretch. Exhale to release, one more on each side. Inhale to squeeze through that right shoulder, extend that left foot away from you, and exhale, release there. One more on the other side, left hand up, right hand, Right foot, sorry, going all the way back. 
and release down onto the mat. So from here, we're just going to work into a few cat cow poses. So we're going to inhale to arch the lower back and lift the chin up towards the ceiling and exhale to push through the mat, rolling through the upper back. So I'm tucking my chin here, looking back down towards my knees and inhale to roll back, lifting the chin, taking the gaze up and exhale to push back down. Inhale to raise up and exhale to push back down. Okay, inhale and take the chin up. This time, try and rotate the forearms and the biceps towards the front of the mat. So we're stretching through the forearms and the biceps, actually coming up into the shoulders a little bit as well. And exhale, release that rotation in the forearms, push back into our reverse. And inhale to take the gaze up, rotate those biceps towards the front of the mat. And exhale to release. And then just come back down into our tabletop pose. So we're just going to tip ourselves over here and we're going to come onto our backs. Release all the way down so we're lying flat on our back. Take the soles of our feet up towards our bum as far as we feel comfortable. And then just lift the feet off of the mat so we've got our knees at roughly 90 degrees. And this might be enough for you. At this point here, if you lift your head off of the floor, you straight away feel your core muscles, your abdominals contract as they uh, work to maintain that position. So we're just going to start by placing the palms of our hands flat on the floor, keeping the knees bent and holding that pose, lifting the chin if we're able to, just holding here for three, for two, for one. Release the feet back down onto the mat, soles are flat, walk the heels up towards the back of your bum, place the palms of our hands flat on the floor, and we're just going to raise our hips up towards the ceiling, so we come up into a hip bridge. So I'm going to lift my lower back as much as I can off of the mat, Weight is coming across the shoulders, head is planted on the floor, palms are flat, and I'm squeezing through my glutes into my hamstring, working into that posterior chain. Holding again for three, for two, for one. Slowly release the hips down, focusing on dropping every single vertebrae one at a time until we reach the bottom of the mat. Keeping those feet in the same position, we're then just going to raise up to find that 90 degree angle again. If we want to add a little bit more intensity to this, we can place the palms of our hands on the fronts of our knees and actually try and push the legs away whilst pushing the knees in as well. So we're doing an isometric contraction here. And straight away, we should get that kind of shaking sensation. And everything is firing, really active in this pose. Hold it again for three, for two. For one, release the hands down onto the mat, release the feet flat onto the mat, and reset those heels into that position that you were for your first hip bridge. So then driving the weight into the heels, lift the hips once again, find that hip bridge squeezing up, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the thighs, and if you want to add a further bit of intensity to this, we can rotate onto the shoulders and try and bring the palms of our hands together underneath us. And from there, we can push through the chest, Really extending, stretching through the chest here, driving the hips still up towards the ceiling, holding for three, for two, for one. Release the hands back out to the side and slowly, one vertebrae at a time, lower yourself down onto the mat. Final little set of these. So again, if you want to, you can just lift the legs up to that 90 degree pose, try and lift the head off of the floor as much as you can and hold here. To add a little bit of intensity, place the palm of the hands on the front of the knees and squeeze, pushing the legs away, driving the knees into the palms of the hands, holding for three, for two, for one. And just release the hands down, release the feet back onto the floor. Final hip bridge, walk the heels up towards the back of the uh, thighs, drive through the heels, lift the hips up towards the ceiling. If you want to walk the shoulders underneath you, try and take hold of the palms of your hands, Go ahead and then really drive and extend those hips up, squeezing the thighs together, really active through this, holding again for three, for two, for one, releasing one vertebrae at a time until we're lying back flat on the mat. Walk your feet together, so we're squeezing knees, uh, insides of feet as much as we can, and then just release the knees out to the side, so we're coming in a lying lotus position. So I've got the soles of my feet tucked together and my knees are just pushing out to the side. And just relax here for a moment as we let gravity start to stretch through the groin, taking that stretch 
really nice and gently. So just working a little bit with the breath here, inhaling deeply through the nose, feeling that uh, expansion through the lower stomach, then all the way up into the chest, and then exhaling deeply as well, releasing all of that air. Okay, in your own time, just take the feet back to shoulder width apart, bring yourself up into a kind of seated pose, and we're just going to tip ourselves all the way around and forward, so we're back in our tabletop pose. So we're going to start working into some of our forward folds and sun salutation positions. So to get into our forward fold, we're just going to tuck the toes and gently lift the knees as much as we're able to and just push back to find our first downward facing dog. So we can walk our feet out, move our hands into whatever position we need to be. We want to have the back as flat as possible. We don't want any rounding. The way to kind of avoid that is to bend the knees as much as we need to. Ideally, we've got really straight legs, but if that means we round the back, we bend the knees to compensate. So just take your gaze towards the front of the mat and slowly, one foot at a time, walk yourself all the way forward until we're back up towards the front of the mat. And then slowly inhale yourself all the way up to standing. So we're going to work for a series of forward folds here. So take the feet to shoulder width apart, bring the shoulders back, bring the head up into a neutral position, looking straight out in front of us. And then just inhale the hands up towards the ceiling, little bit of a raise at the top, and then exhale, take the hands down the front of the body, tuck the chin, and then rolling nice and slowly all the way down. Bend the knees as much as you need to, so we can get either fingertips, maybe hands down onto the mat, and then just let the head hang nice and heavy. And then inhale, rolling all the way up the body, focusing one kind of vertebrae at a time, stacking the back on top of each other until we raise all the way to the top, pull the shoulder blades back, bring the head back to that neutral pose. Inhale, hands once again, extending at the top, and exhale, release the hands all the way down the front, come down into our forward fold, holding here. Maybe try and straighten the legs a little bit more this time, so we're trying to push the knees back to get that contraction. And inhale, rolling all the way up the body, back up to standing. So we're going to take our inhale this time, hands come up, pause at the top, and then exhale to just take the thumbs back towards the back of the room. So we're coming into a slight back bend here. We want to keep those hands driving up towards the ceiling, squeezing our biceps towards our ears. And exhale to bring the hands all the way forward, rolling down the front of the body, back down into our forward fold. So to add a little bit of intensity to this forward fold, we can take our index and forefingers, wrap them around the big toe, clicking them right around it, underneath it, gripping the thumb over them as well. And then we can try and straighten the legs and pull with our biceps and upper backs. This is our gorilla pose. So when we do that, we lock the legs out, driving them out, try and pull with the arms as well, let the head hang heavy, and we should be really working here. Biceps should be bulging, back should be really active, holding for a further three, for two, for one, release the big toe and slowly roll all the way back up to standing. Inhale, hands up above the head. Exhale, come back into your back bend. Take those thumbs towards the back of the room and exhale again and release all the way down into our forward fold. So if you want to go back into the gorilla pose, we can take hold of the big toe. If you want to try and add an even further level of intensity, we can lift our feet off the ground slightly onto the heels and just slide the palms of our hands directly underneath it. So I want to try and get my toes up against my wrists. And from this position here, I can try and push to straighten out my legs. And very quickly, you're going to feel that in the hamstrings. Hold it for three, for two, for one. Slide the hands out from underneath the feet. Inhale all the way back up to standing. So to add just a little bit more onto our kind of uh, folds, we're going to do a side fold. So we're going to squeeze the feet together, squeeze the ankles, squeeze the hips. Inhale to lift the left shoulder up towards the left ear. Exhale to take the right hand down towards the right knee. So I'm doing a kind of banana bend down the right hand side of my body. Really trying to plant the weight through the heels here. Inhaling to lift that left shoulder, exhaling to take the right hand a little bit further down. And inhale yourself back up to the center. Inhale, lift the right shoulder, exhale, take the left hand down towards the left knee. Inhale, right shoulder up really high, exhale, take that left hand a little bit further down. One more deep inhale to lift the right shoulder and exhale, left hand down to the left knee. And inhale, back up to center. Give the shoulders a roll out to the front 
give them a roll out to the back. So find yourself a bit of space back at the front of the mat, take the feet back to shoulder width apart as we start working our way through our sun salutations. So we're going to inhale, hands up above the head, stretching at the top. Exhale, release the hands down onto the mat. We need to bend the knees as much as we need to, so we've got palms of our hands flat on the floor. We're then just going to step back as we find our first high plank. So at any time during this uh, series of poses and postures, we need to just drop the knees down to the mat. That's our obvious go-to. Okay, that takes the weight out of the wrists, takes it off of the shoulders and the elbows as well. If we're able to just sit in our high plank, that's great. So then we're going to exhale, tuck the elbows in really tight, lower ourselves all the way down, flat onto the floor to find our chaturanga. Release the toes at the back, and we're just going to inhale to push through the palms of the hands, lifting the chin, lifting the chest, as we find our up dog. Try and push those shoulders away from the ears, lift the head up, locking out the arms, and then tuck the toes, lift the hips, exhale, push back to find our downward facing dog. So we're going to start by just walking the heels into the mat, getting that stretch going through the Achilles into the calves. And then as we work through our sun sensations, we're going to get a little bit more of a movement, get a little bit more depth in these stretches, and then focus on really opening up uh, in our different postures. So find a little bit of stillness with those feet, take a gaze towards the front of the mat, and then just walk your feet all the way back up towards the hands to find out another forward fold pose. Inhale all the way back up to standing. Take the shoulder blades back. Inhale, hands come up above the head. Exhale to find that little bit of a back bend. Inhale to raise the chest a little bit further. And exhale, take the hands all the way back down into our forward fold. Inhale to step back into our high plank. Exhale, lower for chaturanga. Inhale, drive up to find that up dog. Lift the chin, lift the chest, push the shoulder blades down and then push back and up to find our downward facing dog. So this time in our downward facing dog, we're just going to push those heels right back together towards the mat. And we're going to try and push our forearms and biceps around towards the front of the mat a little bit as well. Opening up the chest, getting the shoulders really active, take the gaze back towards the back of the mat and try and push the chest back towards the front of the thighs. So this is opening up through the armpits into the lats, a little bit more active through the front of the body rather than just all through the posterior chain. And then take the gaze towards the front of the mat as we just step our way all the way back up into our forward fold. Inhale yourself all the way back up to standing. Pull the shoulder blades back. Inhale, hands come up above the head. Exhale, come back into our back bend. Inhale, lift the chest, stretch the hands. And exhale, release the hands all the way back down into our forward fold. Inhale to step back to high plank. Exhale, lower for chaturanga. Inhale, press up to find our up dog. Tuck toes, lift the hips, push back, downward facing dog. Okay, push back into the heels a little bit more this time. Try and push that chest back at the same time. And then we're just going to inhale to lift the left leg up towards the ceiling. It doesn't have to go too far at the moment. And then exhale to set the left foot as far forward as we're able to, as we come forward into a high lunge. So we can adjust the feet if we need to, just inch that left foot as far forward as uh, feels comfortable, and then just lift yourself up to find that lunge pose. So we're just going to sit in here for just a few breaths as we just sit into the stretch, so we can place the hands on either side of the hips, and we really want to find that balance. So we've got to be really strong through the quads, really strong through the glutes as well, pull the shoulder blade back, Take your gaze towards the front of the room and release the hands back down either side of the left foot. Step the left leg back. Exhale, lower for chaturanga. Inhale, press up to find the up dog. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, push back as we find our downward facing dog again. So we're just going to even up on the other side. Inhale, lift up that right leg. Exhale, right leg all the way forward and then lift yourself up to find that forward lunge. So again, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the quads, hands on hips, taking the gaze towards the front of the room, holding three deep breaths, find that balance. And release the hands either side of the foot, step that right leg back into our high plank, exhale, lower for chaturanga, inhale, press up to find up dog, and then just push the hips back, staying on the knees this time, as we come down into a child's pose. 
So our child's pose is our kind of safe place. It's where we can go at any point during the practice if we're not sure where we're supposed to be on the map. We've got a bit lost or we've had enough. So we can come back into this repeatedly as we're going through it. It's just a little bit of a point to grab a few deep breaths because our next series of poses, we're going to start working through a kind of vinyasa flow where we're going to put our sun salutation together and start working a little bit harder. Okay, spread the fingertips nice and wide, tuck the toes, lift the hips, push yourself back and up to find a downward facing dog, and then walk the feet all the way back up to the front of the mat, back into our forward pose. Inhale all the way back up to standing. So we're going to go through our sun salutation, we're going to go into the forward lunge, we're then going to start adding a few warrior poses in there as well. So inhale, hands come up above the head, exhale, release towards the back of the room, inhale to lift the chest, exhale, release the hands all the way down into our forward fold, inhale, step back to high plank, exhale, lower for chaturanga, inhale, press up to find that up dog. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, push back, downward facing dog. So we're going to go into our forward lunge and then we're going to start working through from there as well. So inhale that left leg nice and high, exhale left leg all the way to the front of the mat, inhale lift up to find our high lunge, hold here for three, for two, for one. Drop the right foot to 90 degrees at the back of the mat and drive that left knee forward as we come into our warrior two pose. Inhale lift the hands out to the side, drop that weight forward Left knee's tracking over the left foot, right leg is out completely straight. Inhale, lift the chest, exhale, take the hands back behind, extending the fingertips. One more deep inhale to lift the chest, and exhale, straighten that left leg. Inhale, the left hand up towards the ceiling as we find our peaceful warrior. So we're inhaling to take the hand up towards the ceiling, exhaling to take the right hand down to the inside of the right knee. Inhaling to lift again. Exhale to stretch it, and now inhale, both hands come up, I twist to look towards the front of the mat, and exhale, take both hands down onto the mat, turn that right leg back round, and exhale, step the left leg back into high plank. Exhale, low for chaturanga, inhale, push up to find up dog, tuck the toes with the hips, push back, downward facing dog. So we're going to do exactly the same series, but on the opposite side now. Inhale, right leg up, exhale, right leg to the front of the mat, Inhale, lift yourself up to find that forward lunge. Hands on hips, hold it for three, for two, for one. Drop the left foot to 90 degrees. Extend both hands out to the side. Turn those hips so they're side onto the mat. Extend the hands away from you. Warrior two. Inhaling to lift the chest. Exhale to take the hands apart. Inhaling to raise. Exhale to stretch. And then inhale, straighten that right leg, extend the right hand up towards the ceiling, exhale, left hand comes down to the left knee. Inhale, raise the right hand, exhale, lower the left. Inhale into raise, exhale to lower. Inhale into raise, exhale to lower. Inhale, both hands come back up, turn the hips, exhale down, so hands are back onto the mat, and step the right leg back to find our high plank. Exhale, lower for chaturanga. Inhale, press up to find up dog. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, push back, downward facing dog. So from here, if we want to, we can take our eyes towards the front of the mat and we can step, or if we're feeling really, really confident, we can take a little hop all the way towards the front of the mat into our forward fold and inhale all the way back up to standing. So we should be feeling fairly warm now, so we're going to work into a few uh, sort of deeper stretches uh, as we start working through this a little bit harder, but not harder, the stretches are harder, there's less heart rate, so it's easier. Okay, nice slow vinyasa to get into this pose. Inhale, hands come up above the head, exhale, take yourself into your back bend as far as you feel comfortable. One more deep inhale to lift the chest a little bit more, extend those fingertips up towards the ceiling, and exhale, take those hands all the way down onto the mat, into our forward fold. Step back into high plank, Exhale, lower for Chaturanga. Inhale, push up to find up dog. So toes with the hips, push back, downward facing dog. So we're not going to be going into any of the warrior poses. Much, much easier stuff here. Just inhale that left leg as much as you need to, and then exhale it all the way up towards the front of the room, and drop the right knee, drop the left foot as well. 
So we're going to lift ourselves up. So we're just in a kneeling lunge position here. So from this kneeling lunge, we're going to find our lizard pose. To get into lizards, we're just going to walk the left leg out. So my left foot is now in line with the edge of the left hand side of the mat. And then I'm just going to take my hands down. So my left hand is on the inside of my left foot. Right hand is just down flat on the mat. And from here, I should be able to push my hips forward, push my weight forward. And I should feel that stretch all the way through the inside of the left leg, all the way into the groin, pretty much straight away. So try and lift the gaze, so we're in a kind of neutral head position, we don't want to be rolled over like this. So lift the chin ever so slightly, look towards the front of the room, and then just exhale to allow that knee to track down a little bit further. Pushing your weight down towards the mat, feeling that stretch through the groin. Hold in here, just for three, for two, for one. Okay, we've got to get out of this pose, so we're going to have to tuck our right toes and lift the right knee, Weights in the palms of our hands and just step that left leg back to find that high plank. Exhale, lower for chaturanga. Push up to find up dog. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, push back, downward facing dog. Exactly the same on the right hand side. Inhale, right leg comes up. Exhale, right leg comes down towards the front of the mat. Drop the left knee, untuck the left toes, and then just walk that right foot out to the edge of the right mat. Place the right hand on the inside of the right foot. Left hands flatten them out as well, and we can do exactly the same. Just start pushing the hips forward, feeling that release into the groin. Lift the chin, lift the gaze ever so slightly, so keeping the neutral spine. And we can do a slight kind of pulsing movement here as well. Not big thrusts, just gentle little rocking motion, finding a little bit more space as we do so. Okay, tuck the left toes, lift the left knee, step the right leg back as we come back into our high plank. Exhale, lower for chaturanga. Inhale, press up to find our up dog. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, push back to find our downward facing dog. So we're going to work back into another lizard pose with a slightly more uh, deep version of it. If we want to, we can just take our first lizard and just stay with that. If we want to try something a little bit more intense, then we can give this one a go as well. So inhale the left leg. Exhale, left leg comes all the way forward, drop that right knee down, untuck the right toes, walk the left foot out to the side of the mat. So if we want to, we can just place the left hand on the inside of the left foot, place the right hand down, or we can take the left hand, wrap it around the back of the uh, calf, and try and place the palm of the hand on the top of the left foot. So I'm taking my left hand, slotting it underneath the back of my left calf, and wrapping my left hand around the left foot. And that's going to pull my chest down. So I'm going to have to bend my left elbow, my right elbow, maybe step the right hand out a bit, and just, it changes the angle of the stretch here. And we can just hold here again for three, for two, for one. Release the left hand, come back into that middle position, untuck the right toes, lift the right knee, step back into high plank, exhale lower for chaturanga, Inhale, press up to find up dog, tuck the toes with the hips, push back, downward facing dog. Exactly the same on the other side. Inhale, right leg towards the ceiling, exhale, right leg all the way up to the front of the mat, drop the left knee, untuck the left toes, step the right leg out as wide as we need to, and then take that right hand, either place it on the inside of the right foot, or wrap it around the back of the right calf on top of the right foot, and drop down again into our lizard on the right hand side. So when we finish with this bit, this is all of our lunge kind of stretch work. We're going to move into a little bit of leg work and then a final bit of balance stuff. Okay, release that right hand back into the mat, tuck the left toes, lift the left knee, extend the right foot back to find our high plank, drop the knees, sit the heels, sit the hips back onto the heels, Walk the knees out as wide as we need to, and just take the forehead down towards the mat as we find our child's pose. Okay, so in our child's pose, we want to try and walk the hands away from us a little bit further, really engaging through the lats, stretching out the shoulders as well. Holding here for just three more deep breaths. Okay. 
Spread the fingertips nice and wide, tuck the toes, lift the hips, push back and out, final downward facing dog. Take your gaze towards the front of the mat. If you want to, we can walk, step or hop all the way to the front to find our forward fold. And inhale all the way up to standing. So we're going to work in some of our squat positions. So to do this, we're going to need to take our feet to slightly wider than the shoulder width apart. So I'm going to come sideways on so you can see it more easily and also means you can stay standing on the mat. So when we're in here, we want to make sure the weight is staying in the heels as much as possible. The way that we can check that is that when we're in our squat, we can actually lift our toes off the ground as well. So we're going to start with the feet slightly wide and shoulder width apart. Inhale, hands come up above the head. Exhale, hands come down towards the heart center and then start coming down into that squat position. So even when I'm down at the bottom of this squat, I could actually take my toes off of the mat and give them a little bit of a wiggle. That means I know that the weight is properly in the heels. And we're just going to sit down here for three deep breaths, holding for three, for two, for one. Inhale, hands come up above the head, extend all the way up, and exhale, hands come down to heart center, sitting back down into our Buddha squat. So my elbows are not actually in contact with my knees at the moment, I'm keeping them off of that. Weights all in the heels, sitting here again for two, for one, inhale all the way back up to standing, extend the hands, exhale, hands down to heart center, sit back down into that squat position. We've only got another two after this one. Holding for two, for one. Inhale all the way back up again, exhale, hands come all the way back down, find that bottom pose, check that you can take your toes off of the floor if you need to, for two, for one. Inhale all the way back up, and exhale, come all the way back down. Hold in for three, for two, for one. Inhale, hands come up, and then just exhale, release the hands, give them a little bit of a shake out, give the legs a little bit of a shake out as well. So with our Buddha pose, if we want to, we can stay uh, just kind of working backwards and forwards between that, or we're just gonna try a slightly more intense version just for three reps. So we're gonna try and take one of our horse poses. So for horse, we're actually gonna come up onto our tiptoes, if we're able to, if we want to stay on the heels, that's absolutely fine. And we're going to do exactly the same. Inhale the hands up towards the ceiling. Exhale, come down towards the mat. Try and keep on those tiptoes. Holding for three, for two, for one. Inhale, stay on those tiptoes all the way through. And exhale, release back down. Holding for three, for two, for one. Final one, extend all the way up to the top. And exhale, release yourself back down. Three, two, one. Inhale, hands come up. Heels drop down onto the mat. Release the hands. Give the legs a little bit of a shake out. So that's a really easy one to do, like in your own time. Working into those squat positions uh, is hard, but it's worth practicing. So it's an easy one to come back and do if you need to. All right, Mumbles. Going out. Okay, so we've got some easy balance work to do now. So I'm going to do it facing towards you so you can see it far more easily. It's entirely up to you where you do it on your mat. So we're going to take our feet so they're just shoulder width apart. Weight needs to be in our heels. Standing nice and tall, nice and proud. Just inhale, lift the right leg up and just take hold of the right leg with both hands. And inhale to lift that right knee up towards the chest, really locking out that left leg. So our aim here is we're going to try and keep that left leg as locked out as possible. We need to actually squeeze the left glute to do this. Okay. In your own time, release the left hand out to the side and try and take that right leg out to the side as well. So we're opening up the groin here. You may find that by taking the left hand out and away from you, it gives you a little bit more balance. Hold it again, keeping that left leg really nice and straight. Hold it for three. For two, for one. Okay, release the right hand, take both hands out to the side, bring the right leg back in, and then try and extend that right foot forwards. Hold in again for three, for two, for one, and release the right foot back down onto the mat. Give the right leg a little bit of a shake out. The right hip should feel really hot there as well. Okay, same on the other side. Inhale to lift the left leg. Tuck that left knee up towards the chest, pulling it in as much as we can. Really squeeze that right leg, find that balance point. So that's where we're going to keep coming back to throughout the series. Hold in for a little bit longer. 
and then release that right hand, take that one out to the side, extend the left leg out to the side as well, opening up the groin. Obviously, one day we'll just be holding the foot and extending that out beautifully, but I'm not going to do that one today, I'll embarrass you. Holding for three, for two, for one. Okay, take the left hand, right hand out to either side, bring the left foot into the middle, extend that left foot away from us. Holding again, trying to balance, keep it going. Holding for three, for two, for one. Release the left foot down, give the arms a little bit of a shake out. So we're gonna finish this with a few standing um, tree poses. So our tree pose, we can either place the sole of the foot on the calf, we can even put it on the ground here if we want to actually, on the calf or above the knee. Only place it's not allowed is on the knee. The knee joint is a hinge joint, it's not a sideways joint. So tuck that foot, in the position that's comfortable. I'm going to take it on the calf because I don't have the mobility to get as high uh, as other people might. Find that balance point. Some people find it easiest to balance with the hands in the heart position. It kind of gives you a central pose. And then once we've found that balance point to add a level of intensity, we can try and take both hands high above the head. Okay, so we're going to be holding here for five for four, try and extend those shoulders up towards the ceiling, stretching as much as we can, you've got to push through the heel here, for two, for one, release the hands back down, release the right leg, give it a little bit of a shake out, and find that same position on the opposite side, so right foot locked hard into the floor, tuck that left foot wherever it feels comfortable, find your balance point, and then when you feel good, if you want to, extend the hands up towards the ceiling, Take the fingertips up as high as you can. Hold it again for five, for four, for three, for two, and one. Release the hands back down, release the left leg, give it a little bit of a shake out. So from here, taking our feet back to shoulder width apart, we're just gonna inhale the hands up towards the ceiling, exhale to bring the hands down to heart center and then sit ourselves down back into that squat pose keep going as low as we possibly can and then just drop ourselves down onto the mat so we're sat flat on the mat there extend the legs out straight in front of us inhale hands nice and high above the head lift the chest lift the hips and exhale to just take ourselves into a seated forward fold and then just take those fingertips as far forward as you feel comfortable Try and push the backs of the knees down flat onto the mat. Inhale into lift, exhale, just walk those fingertips a little bit further than you would do normally. Inhale again, exhale, find that stretch a little bit deeper this time. Inhaling, exhaling on the stretch. And just inhale, come all the way back up to that center position. Take the right foot and tuck the sole of the right foot up towards the inside of the groin. So I've got my left foot fully extended, right foot, heel is tucked up on the inside of the groin. And I'm just gonna inhale, lift the chest, exhale, come down the left hand side of the body, extending evenly down the left foot. And inhale yourself back up to center, extend the right leg out this time, Inhale, lift the left foot, tuck the left heel as far up as you need to. Inhale, lift that chest, exhale, come all the way back down the right leg again. And inhale, all the way back up to the center. Just tuck the feet one more time. We're just gonna finish with that uh, first stretch that we started with. So with our feet either crossed underneath us or wherever it feels comfortable, we're gonna work into our side twist. So just inhale, both hands high above the head. Exhale, right hand comes down onto the left knee, left hand behind us. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale to twist through the lower back. So I'm pushing through that left knee with the palm of my hand, taking my gaze slightly over the right shoulder if that feels good. Holding for just a few more deep breaths. And release there, come back to center. Inhale, hands come up above the head. Exhale, release the left hand down onto the right knee, right hand behind. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, find that twist. Gaze over the left shoulder. 
should really feel that releasing through the lower back. You might even get that popping sensation going through the vertebrae. It's not anything to worry about. Okay, inhale all the way back up to the middle. Good finish just on the floor in our Sebastian pose. So just inhale, lift the chest, exhale, lower yourself all the way back down to the line flat on the floor. And then if you want to, you can release the legs out, straight out in front of you. Or if you want to, you can find that lotus pose with both soles of the feet together, allowing the knees to sit out to the side. It's wherever feels good for you. So just let the hands turn out. Palms of the hands are going to end up facing roughly up towards the ceiling. And just relaxing down here. So we're just going to work focusing in on the breath for just a moment. We're going to look at our box breathing. So we're going to work on an inhale where we lift through the stomach, going one, two, three, pausing at the top in the chest for one, two, three, and then exhaling again for one, two, three. Inhale through the stomach, pushing the belly up, one, two, three, pause at the top, holding for one, two, three, and exhale deeply for one, two, three. So keep working through that. Inhaling through the stomach, pausing at the top, and exhaling deeply. Just keep working through that cycle, becoming really aware of the breath, feeling how it feels through the stomach, working up into the chest, expanding at the top, and then that big release as we let the air go. Okay, in your own time, just walk the soles of the feet all the way up towards the back of your bum. So we've got our knees bent about 45 degrees. Tuck the knees up into the chest, wrap the arms around the front of the shins, so we're giving ourselves a bit of a hug. Pull those thighs into the chest as much as we're able to, lifting the lower back off of the mat, and then ever so slowly start bringing a little bit of a gentle rocking motion. We can go forwards, we can go slightly to the side as well. Just finding anything in the lower back that needs a little bit of pressure applied to it. And then slowly start to build up that wrap, that rolling mid motion, until we tip ourselves all the way forward and find that seated position. So again, entirely up to you. Take your cross-legged or take your legs out to the side, whatever feels good. And we'll just finish with three really deep breaths. So in our seat pose, inhale your hands up towards the ceiling. Lift the chest. And exhale, release down to the mat. Two more of these. Inhale, the fingertips nice and 